Good morning, Lummy. Should you go and check and see what's going on outside? Also, my valet stand has arrived. I'll show you that later on. But even more excitingly, the guys have started building the shed. Look at that structure. That looks absolutely beautiful. So we've got 200 solid oak posts with knee braces at I think 160. So a really nice balanced overhang structure there. So this is probably the larger, heavier section of the build. They're just working on getting this right with the knee brace across the top and they'll build off of the back of that. But very exciting stuff. I'll keep you updated on the progress of this build. Boys are working hard out there today. It's pretty chilly. You can see we've got the frost. So probably not the most enjoyable experiences, but we're keeping them topped up with coffee and hot drinks. We'll watch this come together. Good morning. Today we are heading down to EJ Churchill Shooting School. From what I understand, this is one of the largest shooting schools in the UK. We're going to the South Buckinghamshire one. There's two in total. I think one's in North Yorkshire. And I think as well, from a little bit of reading I did yesterday, it's the only shooting school that has a gun making facility on site. I also believe this is where some of the England shooting team go to practice. And the actual estate itself is ginormous. So we're going down there today to have a session and a lesson, which I'm really looking forward to because I do have my gun license pending, which is fantastic. And we're gonna be trying to do some more shooting this year. Clay pigeon shooting, just to be specific. So that's the plan of action. I've got my Purdy sporting vest on, which I've actually got quite a lot of use out of already. It has the padded shoulder just over here, which means it's a lot more comfortable when you've got the gun up into your shoulder. So that is the plan of action. We then have lunch and a meeting afterwards, which should be lovely because it looks like they have some nice facilities there and then I'll be making my way home to continue documenting the build of this shed so let's get going well as you can possibly hear in the background we've arrived to the estate and it looks incredible here I've not seen much of it but already it looks really nice just going to quickly head into reception get checked in and then we'll get busy with the day Now, all your arms do is get it to here. Yeah. After that, your core takes over. Yeah, so you're pivoting on your... All on the core. Yeah. Yeah? That way you've got a lot more control, a lot more stability. So I'm, I'm, I'm your target line, your eyes at the side. Yeah, like that, of course. Yeah. So you're standing slightly... Yeah. So you, you think, if you were going to hit a golf ball... Lined. Yeah. Ma you imagine your old stance, Trying to hit a golf ball that way. Oh well, yeah, I play, yeah. Golf. I play golf. Yeah, so I was told to say like this. Yes, no. Yeah. You're saying to go narrow. Only well, short. Well, that's it. Like that. Don't lean though. Just weight neutral. You just use the call. Break it, we're going to try the tower. Yeah? That's not bad numbers there. What do we do? Probably about six out of eight. Yeah. Not bad, is it? Yeah. Right. Yeah. This is what I As I see it. Right. Yeah. Now, so we've got 
cherry pickers as you said to me too. And you stand in the dugout and see you shoot it like like we would for the Italians at the beginning. It's the way you see today. The easiest way to put it to you, if I was to put it to you in cars, that's yeah. like the Volkswagen Golf full of, of the gun mode. Yeah. yeah? Nice. You know, and you think, 1750, yeah. unless you're going to put 60,000 rounds a year for it, you're never going to wear it out. No, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And everyone starts with these at some point, good resale value. Coming to options, so this is what you call a sporting model. Yeah. Designed for clay shooting. For ventilated rib, slightly wider top rib, and obviously you've got extended chokes out the end. Yeah. But you can have what they call the field version. Got it. Yeah. That's actually a Vittoria, that's designed for the lady. So the length of the barrels? Length of the barrels, standard is 30 inch. Um, in clay shooting, people tend to go more 32 because it's a bit more comfortable when it's longer. Okay. It's just a comfort thing and how much you're going to do with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So these are just like some really small gauge. Yeah, so there's two twenty fours there. And then we go scale right down to there's a little twenty eight or like full time rep. We've got a full ten somewhere. This is his pride and drill, so that far one is the four hundred and twenty four gun churchill's ever made. Of that particular model that was known for one. So that was um 1950, looking at the numbers. But you see um, a, a lot of them in here, um, and we... No, so what the praise we do here is this, that's custom moulded for their grip. Right, the, the pistol bit. Yeah. You can get the whole thing, but so my stock, for example, is, is literally built, so I did that in front of the guy and got far down. Oh, right, so it's lifted. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost like a Robocop, like bionic yeah. man. Like so yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. I mean. I'm yeah. like, surely they just be able to. It's like, like the Churchill you shot. The Churchill you shot, you fully build that to the individual. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's not like an old It's made to yeah. Or what we are, are going to do is we're going to get them coming in in the white. So I thought I would just show you inside the store here at EJ Churchill. As you can see, it's very large. They've got lots of stuff here from Shoful. Little sneak peek at the Baz & Co skincare products you can see there. Also got some Rothery leather flasks. We've got Barber, Troy. This is the women's collection or section, should I say. Fairfax and Favour in stocked in store. Looks like we've got some more gun equipment upstairs, gun bags, cartridge holders, and so on. Got a lovely range of hats in here as well. So I am going to have a little mooch and see if there's anything in here I want to pick up. Well, my day here has come to an end. We've just finished off having a lovely bite to eat in the clubhouse. I went for the venison stew. It was absolutely delicious. And I thought just before we headed out, I would have a quick wander around just to get a good feel for the size and see some of the stands on this estate. Let me tell you, it is absolutely ginormous. They go through 4 million clays a year, around about 1.1 million during a championship here as well. So it's very, very active. They've got grouse stands, they've got the Team GB, set up over the back. We're just currently in front of the east layout. Um, they've got groundsmen that are working constantly on the estate to keep things tidy and in order as you can see. They've got tarmac areas so it's really clean as you're walking around and moving in between each stand. They've got a huge tower up here. It's a couple of traps, that, or I say a couple, I don't know how many, they've probably got a dozen up there firing clays from those as well. So there's just such great variety here and uh, it was fantastic doing my lesson with AD, he's an incredible instructor and uh, he was actually taught himself by somebody on the GB team. So I learned a few techniques, kind of flipped a few of the things that I've been taught on the head, but I started shooting off really well. The end of the shoot I wasn't as good, but then we did obviously go to harder traps, but I really enjoyed it, it was a fantastic day. And the reason why we're actually here today is because I'm being introduced to a brand new brand called Baz & Co. It's set up by James Chase, who 
formerly owned and is part of the family of Chase Gin or Chase Vodka. The Chase Distillery would probably be a more accurate way of describing it. And also Tyrrell's Crisps. So he's ventured into skincare and I'm going to be sharing with you some of the products. I think the packaging's absolutely spot on. So we'll talk a little bit more about that when we're inside in the warm because I have some products to show you. So we sat down over lunch and of course had a conversation and understood his story behind the brand and what he's hoping to do with the brand. So yeah, it's been a lovely afternoon. It's been great getting out. It's also been great talking about skincare. So I'm going to jump in the car. Probably won't be able to see the progress on the shed now until tomorrow because it will be dark when I get home. Good morning. As promised, I'm going to sit down and quickly talk you through some of the products from Baz & Co. Just for clarity, this isn't a sponsored integration. Um, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about what I'd learned through this new brand. I believe the brand's only about 12 months old and I'm yet to try the products, so I can't report on that just yet. But what I can tell you is this is a skincare product that has been launched by a farmer. So not something that you would probably typically hear, not the, the path I'm sure a farmer would typically take. But James took a bit of a passion for a holistic approach to skincare. And I think that it was potentially triggered through a good morning routine. He believes that, and I would agree with this, that a good morning routine sets you up for a good day. It helps you make those right decisions and the kind of knock-on effect from having a good morning routine is something that benefits you, not just in the moment, but throughout the day. He has taken his farming background and knowledge and his passion for morning routines and living a healthier and better lifestyle. He's combined those and he's produced this product or products and this brand, Baz & Co. So Baz meaning Basil. And he told me that Basil in Greek, Basilius, something like that, means king. And um, he said that it's their hero product. It has anti-inflammatory properties, antioxidants. It's also got vitamins and minerals. And it's also a product that works very well in vertical farming. And so vertical farming essentially is, as it says in the name, farming upwards, and it's done in a controlled indoor environment. So he explained to me how it uses 85% less water than traditional agriculture. And it means that you can also control the environment at which these products are being grown in. And also you're able to grow all year round. So in general, it seems like a very efficient, but also a great way to grow a product. And probably, I don't have much experience in this, but probably quite a consistent way as well. So with Basil being the foundation of his ingredients, he's put together a selection of skincare products using sustainable packaging. And first up, right here, we have the body wash. And as you can hear, hopefully, we have the aluminium packaging and it comes with a pump action on top. On the packaging, it says this is a basil grapefruit and spearmint basil Co skincare made in England. And this is something that will probably travel really conveniently. It's very robust. It's also quite a nice size. It's not too big and bulky and it's green, which is always a win here at the Mill and Gordon residency. We do like a green product. And then next up here, we have the two-in-one exfoliator and cleanser. Again, comes in this really easy to travel tube. And then last but not least, we have the moisturizer, which I believe they call it skin food moisturizer. So you may be familiar with the terminology farm to fork. Well, in this case, we have farm to face. And uh, I have to say, it was very inspiring hearing how James has taken his love, knowledge, and interest in farming, and in particular, the innovative side of farming. And then of course, his passion and interest in living a healthy lifestyle and combining those into this product. So it's fair to say that I'm confident that this brand's gonna do great things just off the bat. I'm sure that I'm going to enjoy the product. Like everything I've heard about it, it's very positive. Smells amazing, as I would expect. Not too overpowering with basil either. I'll have to try the uh, other products, but yeah, this is a uh, glass as well, this pot here. I forgot to mention that with the uh, aluminium lid. It was uh, really nice to sit down. He also gave us a couple of little goodies to take away. EJ Churchill cap here. <laughs> this is make laugh. He also gave us a uh, rubber ducky holding a shotgun, as you do. <laughs> a few magazines to take away as well to do a little bit of reading, which actually I might sit down to over the weekend and uh, flick through a few of these. Wow, that's quite nice. That actually gives you quite a good view of uh, 
the estate from above. Before we move on, I also wanted to quickly share with you what I picked up from in store. So I'm gonna move the camera over here. So first up, we have this lovely woolen brown shooting vest from a brand called Curry. I've never heard of them before. They're a British brand and I saw a few items in there from this company that I was like, oh, that's really nice. I was very tempted to go all out and buy the breeks and the jacket and everything else that goes with these vests, but I don't do field shooting, I don't do game shooting, so it'd be a little bit of a waste. When I'm going down the target range, a vest is enough, I can wear my own trousers and my own boots, just mix and match looks. So I decided to just go with the vests, but a very lovely one indeed. It's got horn buttons, it's got these lovely suede padded shoulders and these nice big pockets for cartridges, as well as having a slight adjustment on the back as well, so I can cinch that in a little bit. So that's the first gilet I picked up. And then the second item that I picked up, also from the same brand, with the Churchill check. Again, we've got those tan shoulder pads. They're not actually re-supported um, shoulder pads, but obviously they have got a little bit of thickness to them, so they will help with that comfort. Again, we've got the large pockets and the adjustment on the back. So that's what I picked up in store. It just means that I've got a little bit more variety now um, alongside that purdy vest that I absolutely love. So when I'm going shooting, I've got a few options. These paired up really nicely as well with the corduroys that I was wearing yesterday, so it kind of like helped the sale. As always, I'll leave a link in my description box, both to this brand, but also to Baz & Co, if you wanna go and check those out. We have lots to do today. The shed continues. I also have a small project that I wanna get finished up in Lydia's wardrobe. And then I should probably allocate a little bit of time to editing up all of the content that I have been filming over the past week. It's so strange, actually. I haven't obviously been spending much time on the computer and then I think it was last week or the start of this week I spent a little bit of time going through emails it's mostly like admin stuff I was doing but I was staring at a screen and my eyes it was so intense I just was not used to it so I'm actually uh, wearing my blue tint glasses again at the moment because um, they actually do really work they do help me they're not the easiest to work with because a i'm not used to wearing glasses and b if you are color grading then these obviously do distort the color a little bit but in terms of reducing the stingy red eyes that i get sometimes from looking at a screen these are fantastic well we're at day two building the shed got the boys hard at work so we're actually currently just working on putting the frames into the walls which We'll then have a Douglas fir feathered plank that will be fitted down on the outside. You can see actually just here, we've got the planks on the ground. So they're just currently cutting the uh, wall frames now to slot in between the oak framed shed. But so happy with how this is looking. It's coming together really nicely. We'll have obviously these toggles just taken down to probably about 20 mil, 12 or 20 mil. They'll all be equally uh, dressed up as they come to completion of the job. This back section that you can see here where you can see the second oak post, that's actually going to be for bin storage. So between there and there, there's going to be a wall and then the bin storage will be accessed through a door here. So this section of the shed will actually be separate to my shed. So we have the bins hidden but they're not going to be sitting inside my shed space so it just gives it a nice bit of separation and uh, we've also took back the uh, shed line or shape to stay in line and parallel with the hedge so it's just added that little bit of functionality and uh, also kept a nice aesthetic to the area i just can't get over how nice all of this looks they've done such an amazing job we've also just been looking at the vista through this end panel here and really beautifully framed up you'll see the greenhouse in the distance so the shed wall will come across there and this section will be an overhang so the wall will start here and will come across so this section will be open and this is what we're going to use on this gravel for log storage it means that this is going to be left clear and as you come around the corner you're going to get that perfectly picture framed greenhouse in the background so Absolutely over the moon, lots of effort, lots of time has been spent on this as I know that you guys know this has been in the making for a long time now and uh, just making sure that everything's perfect has been testing but it's going to be worth it. 
when this is all complete. As you can see, we are currently in Lydia's wardrobe and you may remember at the back end of last year, I opened up and painted these kind of like cubby holes either side of her floor to ceiling wardrobes. And we finally just received the poles that I'm gonna be installing for her to hang these items of clothing, which you can see either side of her wardrobe correctly. Because at the moment they're just sort of perched on the ledge. I think Lydia asked on the home account if anyone had any suggestions as to where we could find these poles, because to find a similar match to the handles that she has in the room was quite difficult. And somebody suggested Jim Lawrence, which is a company that we've used many times before for our lighting, and they actually do curtain poles, and that's what these are. But because you can customize them, you can have them made, of course, for hanging. So here we have the pole, which I measured to finish probably around about 20 mil either side of the actual unit itself. We have two brackets to house the 25 mil pole, which will hang from above. And then we have the end caps just to finish off the job. So I'm gonna get busy putting this together, measuring up and working out where these are gonna look best for the clothes and the shoulders to hang nicely hopefully within that section of the wardrobe and then that will complete this little job that we've been working on in this room so we are getting there the only thing that some companies do send that i didn't get on this order were two different screw sizes so the actual wood that these are going to be screwed into would mean that these would come out of the top and obviously very sharp so i'm going to have to use my fine meister and actually cut these down drill a pilot hole so we can use these heads because it's really important that you use the screw heads because of course these will be coated in the same finish. If you were to switch to like a silver or gold posi head, they would just stand out like a sore thumb and they would kind of take away from that like thorough aesthetic that of course Lydia is going to expect and want from this installation. <coughs> So there you have it, first rail has been installed. It's worked out quite nicely. You can see that the sleeves finish off just on the inside of the unit. And we're centralized up really nicely there. Hopefully she'll be happy with those. And there we have it. The rails are installed. They look very lovely. Definitely transform this area for her. Very nice. Just before I head downstairs and get busy with some food, I thought I'd quickly show you the new valet stand that's arrived. I'm really happy with this. I'll leave a link in the description box down below for the website that I picked this up. I believe it was made in Italy, but it works really nicely in the space. 
the next thing that I need to start working on is a rug. So this is actually the carpet cut off from our lounge and I think that this works really nicely. And then I'll probably have it whipped with maybe like a 50 mil border in a similar kind of color to the walls just to tie everything in. And the rug will probably go from this corner around about here, run all the way along to keep an equal width around and then it will go all the way along the back. So that's the next sort of task, the next thing I'm focusing on. And then I need to look for an antique armchair that will go at the back of the bedroom. The mirror is not far off, it's pretty much there. We're just waiting to try to get a nice color match so it blends in nicely with this furniture that I already have. Not sure if the trunks will stay in here. It all depends as to whether they fit in with the layout, but we're making progress. It's been a very slow moving furnishing process, I'm not gonna lie, but we've just had so many other things to focus on. It kind of took a back foot, but we're getting there. Pleased that this has finally arrived. It looks really lovely. So we are now one step closer to having this room complete. that was a really disappointing joint of me. I definitely won't be buying a lamb breast ever again. It was not right. It's probably my cooking to be honest with you, but yeah, there was just something not good about that meat. It was very, very fatty. But anyway, the rest of it was very delicious. I've uh, been enjoying doing my roasts recently. <laughs> I'm apparently the new climbing frame. Um, but yeah, I've been enjoying doing it and I can just do it without thinking about it now So it becomes a much more enjoyable experience and I guess that's what cooking's all about I think that's probably what people fall in love with with cooking is that kind of effortless Probably quite therapeutic practice of going into the kitchen cooking experimenting But yeah, it's been good and uh, I think that this Considering I'm stuffed now, it's probably a very good time to wrap up this evening's video. So thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this one. And I hope you, as always, have a good rest of the week. And we'll be seeing you next Wednesday. <laughs> Back 5pm. Take care. <laughs>